Hello everyone, it's Leo and it's June. I know it's almost over, but it's not over yet, so it's still time for us to celebrate Pride. Yes, June is Pride Month, and in this month we all over the world remember our fights, remember who came before us, and we're still here, we're still fighting, we're still brave, we're still demanding respect, equality, and rights. And for that, I decided to do a list of LGBTQIA plus characters in magical girl shows. Obviously, this list is not supposed to be the most complete one. I just picked some characters that I remembered. And if you have any other or if you have any recommendations of magical girl shows that have LGBTQIA plus characters that I haven't seen, please leave in the comment. Obviously, this video might have spoilers for some of those series because in some of them, uh, the relationships and their sexualities or their identities are revealed in some sort of plot. So be warned. Let's start with our most iconic couple ever. Well, I say this because they had so much power over me, especially when I was growing up, which is Haruka and Michiru, Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune from Sailor Moon. This is a very important couple for me because I was very young when I discovered Sailor Moon and I obviously already knew I was gay. And so reading Sailor Moon and seeing a lesbian couple right there on the screen or on paper, you know, I just felt so happy and I felt contemplated. I felt that it was possible. I was able to look at that couple and see myself in some way and I loved it so much. Haruka and Minchu are very, very powerful in the whole pop media and, you know, cultural. They have a big cultural impact that was kind of later replicated on Kira Kira Precure a la mode with Cure Makaron and Cure Chocolate, even though in Kira Kira's case, he didn't have like a clear say that those two characters were indeed a couple. Instead, we had a very special episode in Kitty Kitty Precure, which is still up to date. One of my favorite Precure episodes in which they showed a lot of love for one another. And the monster in that episode was a lily. I mean, if you don't know what a lily is in Japan, search for it. Also, keeping on with the Sailor Moon thing, in the 90s anime, in the first season, Sailor Moon, the classic season, we had Zoe Saito and Kun Zaito, two villains that were men, and they were also a couple. They were uh, different types of villains than the predecessors, because both of the villains that came before them, they tried their best to please Queen Beryl, and those two, they have this loving dovey relationship with each other, they cared about each other a lot, and their departure was really heartbreaking. And they didn't care about pleasing Beryl that much because, well, they had each other. And a very sad fact about it is that Zoe Saito was censored in some countries and he was turned into a woman. Zoe Saito on the original is very feminine. He has a very feminine voice. He is very feminine in his way of acting, but he is still a man, you know. <laughs> but, uh, in some countries, unfortunately, Zoe Saito was turned into a woman so that they didn't have to edit out their relationship. I, I hate this so much. Now let's jump onto another classical magical girl show, which is Cardcaptor Sakura. In Cardcaptor Sakura, we have lots of characters that can, you know, be considered LGBTQIA+. And uh, the first one I'm gonna say here is Shaolin Lee, who is Sakura's love interest and Sakura's love partner. Actually, they end up the manga, they end the manga in a relationship. But when, when Shaolin was introduced in the series, he had a big crush on Yukito. But Yukito and Toya, Sakura's brother, they are very, very close to each other. They have a very intimate relationship. And even though we don't see them kissing or anything like that, we can really read them as a couple. Another character from Cardcaptor Sakura that makes her feelings very clear is Tomoyo, Sakura's best friend. In one of the scenes from the manga, Tomoyo tells Sakura that she loves her and Sakura answers back saying, I love you too. But then Tomoyo pans away a little bit and says, well, my type of love is different. Obviously, Sakura was thinking of her as a friend and the love a friend feels for, for each other, but Sakura's love 
But Tomoyo's love for Sakura isn't a friend's love. Yes, Tomoyo loves Sakura just like that. I am not sure about the anime and if this scene is in the anime, it was not in the Brazilian version and I don't know if it was censored or if it was just not there. So I can't pinpoint but I, but my guess is that this scene is not in the anime. Still in Cardcaptor Sakura, we also have Nakuru. Nakuru is the counterpart of Yue and they are one of the one of Ariel's guardians. Nakuru or Ruby Moon is canonically a genderless creature, but they decide to present themselves as a woman using female clothing and a f choosing a female name for their civilian form as well. And now let's go to a more recent Magical Girl show, which is Maho Shoujo Sight. Yes, this show has some characters that are on the LGBTQIA plus spectrum. And let's start with our main character, Aya, and Tsuruno, the other main character. This scene wasn't in the anime, unfortunately. But when both of them were sharing their last day together, in one of the last scenes of that heartbreaking moment, they share a kiss with each other. Yes, they got very intimate during the story of Maho Shoujo Sight, and I think that it all culminated in that moment. It was very, very beautiful, but unfortunately, manga only. There is another character that was also in the anime, Kiyoharu Suirenji. Suirenji is one of the girls that was chosen by the administrators to become a magical girl and she is a trans girl and she gets bullied a lot in school because of that but when she gets her powers she can you know defend herself a little better now moving on to another magical girl show that is kind of in this tragedy realm just like maho shoujo site i'm talking about maho shoujo ikusei keikaku one of my favorite shows ever read the novels in the first arc in the first novel or in the season of the anime because we only got one anime season unfortunately we have winter prison and sister nana ways winter prison and sister nana are both women and they are both a couple and they love each other their relationship is really really adorable what happened was that nana became a magical girl first and well, they were already in a relationship, they were already living together, and Nana did everything in her power to make Wes Winter Prison become a magical girl together with her. And yes, both of them became magical girls. And ultimately, I don't think that was a good choice for either of them. Sorry. Now, it's impossible to talk about magical girls and not talk about one of the most classical magical girls out there and one of the most queer shows out there as well, Shoujo Kakume Utena. I think it's very hard to pinpoint queer characters in Utena because basically everybody can fit into the queer spectrum, but there are some more clear examples. One being in the anime, Judy. Judy is a very different character in the anime than she is from the manga and Judy in the anime is in love with her best friend who happens to be a girl. Her feelings towards her best friend is a secret at the start and she even has a boyfriend kind of like a fake relationship to show everybody but she is deeply in love with this friend of hers and she tries to get closer to her by dating this guy and so like this creates a big drama i mean everything in utena is very very dramatic and obviously we have to talk about the main characters utena and anthi both of them are legendary characters when it comes to lgbtqia plus representation and at that time in the 90s it wasn't possible for them to show a kiss from two characters from the same gender and Ikuhara had to go ways around that to show their relationship. Take a look at the last ending. If you haven't seen Utena, go watch Utena because it's flawless. But the last ending from Utena is very clear of what I'm saying. Like They really went around. They couldn't show a kiss directly. They did what they could. Also, in the movie, The Adolescence of Utena, their relationship is shown in a more clear way and Utena's revolution is more visible. And, well, this movie is also gorgeous. Girl, I just love it. It's one of my favorite anime movies 
ever. But it's crazy. It's very surreal. It's very Ikuhara. So be warned if you're going to watch it. And now let's keep on with the Ikuhara stuff and talk about Yurikuma Arashi. Is this a magical girl show? Is this not a magical girl show? I'm considering it a magical girl show because there is a transformation scene for some of the characters. Yes, they transform when they are going to act. So yes, I consider this a magical girl show. I mean, there are girls transforming, why not? This show is an allegory for what it means to be a lesbian in Japan. So most of the girls, or if I think all of them, are girls who love girls. So at the end of the day, they're all lesbians. But I have chosen two characters to mention here, and one of them is Tsubaki Kureha, the main character of this show. She is a girl who is in love with her best friend and classmate, and Yukishiro Ginko, a bear who goes past the wall of Severance into the real world, into the human society, if we can call it that. This show is really crazy. But yes, she comes into uh, the human society and, you know, she ends up having some pretty interesting relationships in this world. I just love Yurikuma Arashi. It's a very beautiful show, even though it's totally crazy as well, just like Ikuhara is. But yes. Anyways, those were some of the LGBTQIA plus characters that appear in Magical Girl shows. If you have any more to mention, please leave a comment on the comment box and tell it to me. And to finish this video, I just want to read something that Dominic Jackson has said. And I'm reading it because obviously, you guys know, my memory is horrible and I can't save anything in my mind. So yes, I'm reading this little part. And Dominic Jackson is an actress. She stares on Pose. If you haven't seen Pose, girl, you're missing out. And she won an award at the HRC National Equality Award. And obviously, she just made her speech. And I want to read a little bit of her speech that says, I will never, ever ask any of you for respect. I will demand it. You will not tell me that you accept me. You will not tell me that you tolerate me. That is not your power. I take that from you. You will respect me for who I am. And we as LGBTQIA plus people, we really need to absorb what she said because that is very important for who we are. We don't need to be shy about it. We don't need to be apologetic about it. No, we are who we are. And that's it, point blank. Happy Pride, everybody. Happy life to every single one of, of you who is LGBTQIA+. Don't be afraid of being who you are. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.